so how much do you think the the role of the lack of precision capabilities for bombing that you alluded to um, as you were uh, oh. going through the lesson, yeah. how, how much do you think that, that the, t the technology or the lack of technology, how much of a role did that play in the decision to tip towards strategic bombing as opposed to more precision Oh, bombing? strategic bombing or tactical bombing, hey, precision is a wonderful thing. Today, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, for example, one American fighter armed with 16 precision guided bombs can go in and essentially take out, and, and you've seen these on, on YouTube presentations and whatnot, you pick the bad guys are in that house, you drop a bomb on that house, and you drop the right size bomb. We don't need a bomb that can blow up a city block if all we're trying to do is take out the third bedroom in exaggeration but the point is the 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 carnage in the cities of world war ii where i put up 300 bombers and they drop these dumb bombs from a large formation with errors it's going to take out large sections of the city oh yeah the marshalling yard in the middle also went but all the rest of it goes we would we would like that tactically or strategically that's the wonderful way to go and by the way the reason we don't need 3,000 airplanes anymore, we need 30. Um, uh, one airplane can do the job of these mass formations of World War II and without the casualties and to take out the thing you really want, now, the target. Right, but, but there was a very intentional focus on designing, for instance, the firebombing attacks. Yes. Um, Dresden, Hamburg, and, mm -hmm. and that was justified by the Allied powers in that decision. Certainly it was. But ha was there any kind of, I don't quite know how to phrase this, but was there any kind of sort of, we're justifying this because it's all we can do? Do you, do you see what Bomber, I'm Yeah, I, I know where you're going. Bomber Harris, who, who, yeah. was, who was the Air Chief Marshal in, in charge of uh, Bomber Command, was a controversial in figure Britain. even, yeah, in, in, the, in the Royal Air Force, right. uh, was a controversial figure even during World War II. Uh, hey, the Brits had gone through the Blitz. They had gone through periodic attacks on their cities. Now we're visiting it upon the Germans and, of course, the occupied countries as well <clears throat> in many fold over. Uh, a lot of people are dying. Even the British, some Americans are, wow, do we have to do this? The technology of the time and the political theory the doctrinal theory that Harris continually managed to, to sell to yeah. his higher ups and all the way up to Churchill was the Dohe Mitchell uh, trenchard thought of, of World War I and the after years that we can destroy the morale of the people, they will cease to produce, to fight, uh, they will uh, 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 push their leaders yeah. to, to, to sue for peace, to get us out of this horrible thing. Um, uh, Harris believed in that very, very big. Yeah. Um, Americans weren't so locked into that. We were wedded, uh, rightly or wrongly, but uh, the idea was to uh, uh, mostly take out with the precision as we had it in those days, which was not that precise, but it was better than just let's just drop them yeah. all over the place, yeah. uh, to take out these specific industries, targets. Uh, you also, by the way, uh, uh, granted, you take out the workers, the factory isn't going to work very well. Mm -hmm. You take out the railroad workers who are working the marshalling yard you've just taken out. They don't rebuild it very quickly. They don't get the trains back in operation. So, yes, it was a known quantity that you were losing civilians. In fact, during uh, one, one notable aspect of the pre-work to getting into Normandy is that there were many, many rail yards bombed. Uh, uh, strategic bombing moved off of, in fact, much to the chagrin of many of the leaders, moved off of the uh, targets that we're going after industry and oil and whatnot, and now we're bombing these rail junctions and rail yards and road junctions and bridges, and it was well known who's running them, the French. Mm. 
we killed probably upwards of 100,000 French, and it was known to the Allied leaders, right. including the free French in England. Right. This is the price of doing business. If we're going to get back in, we have got to stop it. And there was a recognized uh, uh, loss, collateral damage, we'd call it today. Uh, it's going to happen, and it's the cost of war at the time. So kind of on a, on a bit of a tangent, but absolutely related to this controversial kind of question, um, the Allies, of course, knew that the concentration camps were in existence during World War II, yes. right? There wasn't secret no. information. Um, there were certainly some requests, at least to Roosevelt, to bomb the concentration camps to, to stop the process, despite the fact that there would be vast collateral damage, of course, yes. of the prisoners. Do you have any sense of why that was never um, undertaken? Th there's a lot of controversy involving, and let's call it what it is, the Jewish question of World War II. Um, even after the war, turning down Jewish refugees in the United yeah. States, still a major controversy today. Uh, Shiploads that were going to come and did uh, mm -hmm. beyond the scope of this. Um, a, a lot of it was more the practical. First off, a lot of these camps were well, uh, well, yeah, well toward the uh, uh, Polish area, uh, beyond the range of American bombers, effectively, and the escorts and whatnot. And and you've got the moral issue. Yes, you could take out a camp, but in the case of some of these camps, there are many, many thousands Jews. Hungarians, other displaced peoples who are in prison. Um, we're going to kill many, many more of them than we are the relatively few guards of the camps and whatnot. Whereas one extraordinarily famous British raid, which was a phenomenal piece of work, there were a lot of French uh, uh, Maquis, the uh, underground, uh, imprisoned at Amiens, France, in a Gestapo facility up there. Uh, word had gotten through in, in through all the sources that people had in those days uh, that a lot of these were going to be executed. And this was this was fair game. I mean, the, the Germans weren't particularly uh, reluctant to do this sort of thing, to make an example. They mounted an attack by mosquito fighter bombers, uh, which was a phenomenal British airplane not to go into here. But this precision attack took out certain parts of the wall. Yeah, okay. They ended up killing a number of the partisans, no question. They killed a lot of Germans, but more important, over a hundred of the prisoners escaped and now they're running back into the, into the hidings in France. So here was a message to the Gestapo, uh, we can find you guys. Um, a, a limited a, a limited attack and very small, but compared to the number of camps yeah. and and I, I think it would have been Distance. utter carnage. Yeah. You had people who couldn't defend them. Heck, they could hardly yeah. walk anyway, some of these folks. How would they have defended themselves? We would have wiped out an awful lot of people yeah. in our bombing. Tough we didn't have the means technically to do that. Yeah, and a tough question. Yeah. yeah.